Hi and welcome to the class of real analysis and today we will start the lesson uh, from where we left in the previous class that was we were doing limit points and this was the last question that was left and now we'll figure out the solution for this problem. Okay, so if we consider this sequence, what actually we can do for it is we can see that there are negative and positive terms. So first of all, we can split this sequence and write in terms of union. So we can write one comma three over two, comma four over three, comma five over four and so on. And then union negative one comma negative half comma negative two over three comma negative three over four and so on. And now these uh, sequences we can see partially into these sequences because we have two parts of the uh, set, sorry. We have two parts so we can look at it partially. So for instance, if I take this part first and I need to find the limits points. So I can see here that as uh, I am marching, for instance, uh, this is my uh, one somewhere here, let's suppose, and then uh, 3 over 2, it's greater than 1, so it's somewhere here, 3 over 2, and then 4 over 3 is lesser than 3 over 2, and then 5 over 4, it's lesser than 4 over 3, and then 6 over 5, and eventually moving towards, towards, towards 1, and is the point, one where I am going to, where the points are going to be accumulated, or they are going to be clustered, near one, because as I am moving forward, six over five, seven over six, eight over seven, nine over eight, I'm getting closer and closer and closer to one. And you can check as well, for instance, you can write like this, that one, uh, for instance, 10, uh, five, seven, nine, eight, six, this is a number, for instance, a larger number, and then divide by just, uh, uh, smaller, so it's eight, five, right? And you will see that you are very, very near to one. So as you are moving forward and forward, we are going to, we are eventually going to uh, accumulate near one. So the limit point of this set is one. All right, now for this set, again, for this set, we can see here that if we draw a line similarly, and we look at this set here, like this, if you draw a line, this is my, for instance, negative one somewhere here, and then I have negative half, so negative half is greater than negative one, so it will be somewhere here, negative half, or just keep it inside. So it's like somewhere here, negative half. Okay, and then we have negative two or th uh, two or three, which is negative, Two point, uh, sorry, point six six six. So it's greater than neg uh, negative half here. Okay, so then we have negative two over three, which is a negative zero point six six six, which is lesser than negative half. So it will be inside negative half. That is negative two over three. And again, for negative two or four, this negative 0.75. Again, this is lesser, so it will be negative 0.75 inside. Or we can write negative three or four. And again, if we if I if we talk about negative four or five, again we are going closer and closer and closer to one, negative one. So we are going to accumulate somewhere near negative one. So we can see that the points are going to accumulate, or they are going to make a cluster near negative one. And similarly, you can think about a bigger number like this. In this case, a negative number and divide it by its num uh, number just uh, greater than it. For instance, if I flip this number, so it's uh, one, zero, five, seven, nine, eight, five, or two, three, like this, I'm going to uh, choose a bigger number instead and five to four and this negative sign and I can see that this is very very near to negative one. So obviously this set is going to converge at negative one or we can say that it will be accumulated or making cluster near negative one. So the limit point for this set is negative one. So none other point is the limit point we can see that no other point in this set is like where the points are accumulated. So we can just write here in this case that the set of limit points 
as one and negative one. So the set of limit points for this set is one and negative one. So limit points are just one and negative one. And uh, then when we will be talking about the drive sets, actually this the set of the limit point is the drive set simply. So the drive set drive drive set for this set as so we can write it as D of S, it will be simply nothing but one and negative one. Okay, so we can write in this way. So now uh, we'll move on to the derived set. So the derived set is the set of all limit points of a set is called the derived set. So we already talked about the derived set, derived set. So whatever limit points we get, we will make a set and we'll call it a derived set. So it's uh, easier we'll uh, look at some examples. For instance, if we uh, look at this one, so it's saying that uh, x is greater than or equals to zero and less than one, which implies that the set is zero comma one. And we need to find the derived set. So let's talk about the limit points of the set first, because if we get the limit points, then obviously we are going to get the derived set. So this is my point zero, which is included. This is my point one, which is not included. Again, get back to the definition of the limit point that uh, the neighborhood of uh, point neighborhood of point you know, with the intersection of the set is uh, if infinite then we call it a limit point so we can see here that this is an interval so every point is uh, counted every point is included in this interval from zero to one and zero is also included so if I uh, count this zero, I count this one and every point in this set and I talk about the neighborhood. For instance, if I'm going to talk, take the neighborhood here, I call it one minus epsilon comma one plus epsilon. And if I am going to uh, get the intersection of this set, now this neighborhood of this one with this S, then of course I am going to get inf infinite points because we know that this is my one minus epsilon. So these all points are infinite points or uh, epsilon is like uh, for each epsilon greater than zero, for all epsilon greater than zero, we have the def definition that for every epsilon. So which means that I can take it, uh, uh, the epsilon to here, 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 somewhere in the set. It's up to me, right? So uh, we are taking as smaller as smaller we can because we need to show that uh, whatever epsilon we are taking uh, around this point, that is one. And then we, we are going to take the intersection of this set of uh, the neighborhood of one with the set original set S then is going to be infinite. Right, so that's the definition of limit point. So this point satisfies the definition of limit point. Even this uh, one plus epsilon is not included in the set, but we don't need it to be included in the set because we just need to see the uh, look at this thing that the intersection of this neighborhood with the set should be infinite. That is only what we need, right? So it's not necessary that this also should be included in the set. It's not necessary for the limit point. So the limit points of the set are from zero to one and all the points are included. So these are the limit points. And again, this set, this implies that the derived set of S is the set of the limit point. So all the points between zero and one are the limit points. So everywhere, if I want to take a point and I want to take its neighborhood, I'm going to uh, uh, get infinite points if I took intersection with the set S of that neighborhood for every point uh, in this set from zero to one. And uh, again, for this one, now I, we can see that it's uh, zero x one, but x is rational this time. Now x is rational. So x is rational. And now what happens here is if I, okay, first let me, take the points, this is my point zero, this is my point one. Now, this x belongs to the rational numbers, which means that 
uh, which means that uh, some numbers will be missing in between. For instance, if I uh, want to write some numbers between zero to one rationals, for instance, it's half, it's two by three, it's three by four, it's uh, five uh, by six, for instance. But if we want to take a small neighborhood around these points or any point, in fact, any point, uh, let's say if I took this point, one over two, for instance, or I took two over three, and if I want to draw a, a small neighborhood, that is two, two over three minus epsilon, comma two over three plus epsilon. And if I want to take the intersection with the set, then I am going to get this intersection empty because there are no numbers in the neighborhood of two over three. We can see, we, we know that in the rationals, uh, they are not complete. There are gaps between rationals. So there are many irrationals in the neighborhood of this rational number and which does not belong to the set. But uh, if you remember uh, about the limit point that uh, we define the limit point, that limit point is not necessarily uh, that it's not necessary for the limit point to be in the set. It can be outside the set. So the limit point actually belongs to R. So now what will happen here that if I take neighborhood of two over three, for instance, if I was taking neighborhood of two over three, sorry, I write mistakenly because I was uh, talking in the sense of rationals, but in the limit point, we know that the definition of the limit point, for limit points, we need to check whether the limit point uh, it belongs to R, okay? It's not necessary for the limit point to be in the set. So X is rational. So if I uh, took any point, any rational number between zero and one, and I want to take the neighborhood of that number, that number, I will, uh, get a lot of real numbers, irrational numbers, for instance, uh, in the neighborhood, rational and irrational numbers, but uh, the numbers uh, belongs to R. So the, uh, the, the numbers belongs to R, which means that uh, every real number, every real number between zero and one will be the limit point. So every real number between zero and one will be the limit point of this set. Okay, so, okay, now let's talk about the third problem. So for this set, again, we will draw the set on the real line. This is an open interval, so we can easily draw the set. Let's say this is point A and it's going to infinity. And again, if we, take any point in the set and we draw a small neighborhood around the point, any point from the set and make a small neighborhood. So we are going to get the points in the neighborhood and of course, infinite many points and the intersection of the neighborhood with the set is going to be infinite. So all the points in the set are the limit points. So the drive set of this S is A to infinity. Infinity cannot be included in the set, so it's always excluded. And we can write in this manner that it's A comma infinity. All right. Now, now let's move to this problem. Look at this one. This is simply three by two, five by four, Four, nine over eight, 17 over 16, and again, moving on and on. And we are going to stop at one. Because again, if we draw this set on this line, then three over two is the bigger element, then five over four is smaller than nine over eight, smaller 17 over 16 is smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and we are going to touch near one so there will be a lot of accumulation around this one so one is the limit point 
for this set. So the derived set is singleton one. Okay. Now, if we move on to this one, this is very uh, simple example. Uh, it's similar like one over n when n belongs to a natural number, but this time it's a z that is integer. So again, we can break this set that is uh, like this, negative one over five, negative one over four, negative one over three, negative one over two, negative one, and union, uh, one half, one over three, and so on. And again, we can see that this increasing order is just like that. It's one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, lesser, 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 and eventually it's moving towards zero. Okay, because uh, as we are moving uh, like one over n, and n is going to be bigger and bigger, then eventually uh, my denominator will be much bigger than my numerator. And in this case, it's moving towards zero. So zero is the limit point of this set. And for this set also, zero is the limit point because around zero, the points will be accumulated as we are moving one over two, one over three, one over four, one over five, and so on. And we are going to get near zero. So the derived set of this set is zero. Singleton zero, we can write. Okay, so again, uh, now, okay, let's start with the definition of closed sets. So when we call a set to be closed, okay, so a set, is set to be closed if each of its limit point is a member of the set. So if every point, for instance, if we talk about this set, for instance, zero to one, it's a set like this. And we can see if we want to draw the limit points of this set, so this belongs to R, and we know that all the points of this set are the limit points, zero included, one included, and everywhere, if we are, going to apply the definition of limit point, we are going to get the limit point. So we can see that the set S, uh, or we can say the drive set is equals to the set is itself because all the points are the limit point. So in this case, the set is said to be closed. And uh, A drive set that is A drive is contained in A. One of the way to represent the closed set is this one also. But this is more general definition that I said to is said to be closed if it, each of its limit point is a member of the set. And then the second definition says that a set is closed if it's if and only if this is if and only if condition, its complement is open. Okay, if we write this set zero comma one, for instance, and if we want to take the complement, and remember when we talk about complement in this course, real analysis, we are talking about the universe that is the real line because complement is the set, we are subtracting the set from its universal set. So the universe is R in real analysis. Universe is always R. Uh, if it's not specified, especially, then it's always R. So the universe is R, so R minus the set, this complement of zero one set means that R minus zero one, so it will be an open interval or open set. In fact, I, we can show here that the complement will be open set. So let's write zero one complement equals R minus zero one, which equals to negative infinity to zero. So all the elements from negative infinity to zero union zero to one union one to infinity. Okay, oh sorry, uh, this will not be included. Instead, this will be like this because all the elements are from zero to one, they are uh, subtracted. So we are only left with one to infinity. Okay, this is fine now. 
So the complement of zero comma one, this interval, that is R subtract uh, subtracting the zero one from R, we are going to get all the points excluding these points. So only these points are excluded from the real line or the set R. So we can subtract these points. So we can write in this manner and we can see this is an open set because the union of open sets is open. And we will show some illustration of open and closed sets in later stages. So we will see some uh, lemmas or we can say some statements, journal statements. So R minus zero one is negative infinity zero union one to infinity and this is an open set and by the definition of open set we can see that we can have a neighborhood for every point in the set so this is the definition of open set and this satisfies qualifies the definition of the open set so the complement of this set is open so this set itself is closed so the set zero one it's closed set okay now there is some illustration of open and closed sets so first is that the intersection of two open sets is open so the intersection of two open set is always open for instance if i'm writing a b intersection CD, for instance, and no matter if they are disjoint or not disjoint, but their intersection is going to be open. Intersection of finite number of open set is open, okay? So intersection of finite collection, if you are taking a finite collection and then taking its intersection, then the set will be open, okay? Uh, okay, then intersection of an arbitrary family of open set may not be open, okay? if we are going to take, for instance, uncountable sets or an arbitrary set family uh, that might not be open, okay? So maybe or may not be open. So for an example, we have uh, constructed an example that a set that is from negative one over n to one over n, where n belongs to natural numbers is an infinite family. And if we take their intersection, then their intersection is going to be zero because as we are now familiar with this one over n and negative one over n so we can imagine what we are actually talking about so if we want to write this thing in the intervals so and we take the we want to take the intersection of intervals of this kind so first of all n belongs to natural numbers so we will start from one putting start from uh, putting one then putting two then putting three so it will the intervals will be like this negative one to one then negative half to half, negative one over three to negative one over three, negative one over four to negative one over four, positive one over four, sorry, negative one over n to positive one over n and so on because we are talking about an uncountable set. So we are taking intersection. So eventually uh, we are moving, there's negative one over n and one over n. So we know that this thing here, negative half or half uh, is, uh, a subset of this negative one over uh, negative one comma one. But what will be the intersection of this set will be this set it's itself. The intersection of these two sets will be the set it's itself because this set here, this set is uh, contained in this set. Or we can say this is a subset of this set. Again, similarly, this one is subset of this set. Then uh, eventually this is going to be the subset of this set also because this is a subset of this because we have a property that if the so A is subset of B and B is subset of C, then A is also subset of C. So by this property, this and again, this is subset of this set and every successor set is the subset of its uh, predecessor. So when we are moving on and on, on and on, on and on. So somewhere near, we are going to get like very close, very small interval because we are increasing n. And so the n is going to infinity. And we, so when n goes to infinity, we know that one over infinity is zero. Comma one over infinity again is zero. So we are going to get the null set. So, uh, again starting from here now last set is for instance our null set then if we are, we are we started taking intersections so this intersection this 
it was this set itself. Then this intersection, this, it was it's this set again. Then this intersection, this, it was this set again. Okay, similarly, we are going to get the successor set again and again. So the last set is going to be the zero, which is, uh, which has no successor. So the intersection of all these set is going to be zero. So this is an empty set. So we know that null set is uh, a closed set. So uh, by this uh, example, counter example, we, see, we saw that the intersection of an arbitrary family of open sets may not be open. So it's a closed set, zero. Okay. And then we have the third condition that union of an arbitrary family of open set is open. So if we can take uh, union of uh, arbitrary arbitrary union of family of open sets and we will get an open set. Uh, by arbitrary means we, we can take infinite elements or we can take infinite sets uh, sorry uh, uncountable sets infinite uncountable countable it's up to us so arbitrary means that we are free to choose any kind of uh, set collection so we are going to get the open so union of an arbitrary family of open set is open union of two closed set is closed okay union of two closed set is closed, union of finite number of closed set is closed, okay. So union of arbitrary number of open set is not closed. So unlike in uh, the open set, the union of uh, infinite, or sorry, arbitrary union was open, of open set was open, but here union of finite number of closed set is closed. So we cannot take arbitrary union, right? So, and we have constructed an example as well, Union of arbitrary family of closed set may not be closed. And here is an example. This is a closed set, one over n comma one. Again, if we want to construct the intervals, we can construct in this manner, one comma one, union one over two comma one, union this, 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 this. And now this union, again, this n is going to infinity. So we know that one over n, as n goes to infinity, is marching towards zero. So we will get the last set as zero comma one so zero cannot be included in the set okay zero cannot be included in the set because we are uh, uh, tending towards infinity but we are not equals to infinity right so zero cannot be included in the set so the union we can see that it's not closed it's open from one side so there is a difference between that we are tending towards infinity and we are equals to infinity. So keep this difference in your mind. So one over n tends to infinity does not means that, uh, sorry, uh, n tends to infinity does not means that uh, uh, that n is equals to infinity because infinity, we cannot think about infinity. It just means that you are marching towards zero. You are tending towards zero when you are taking, when, when you are, we are taking n bigger and bigger. So that's pretty simple. So again, intersection of an arbitrary family of closed set is closed, okay? So in this case, we can take arbitrary, uh, intersection of arbitrary family, but in the case of open set, it was intersection of finite sets, of open finite uh, open sets will be open. And every open set is union of open intervals, okay? But uh, converse is not true. Uh, it means that every open set is union of open intervals, but every open interval is not a union of open sets. We cannot say that, all right? So empty set phi is open set, as there is no point in phi which is not a neighborhood, okay? So uh, the set R and phi, they are both open and closed at the same time. That is their property that, that are both open and closed. So these sets are open and closed as well. Okay, so these are also the example of uh, sets that are open and closed at the same time. Okay, so Q and Q complement, that is irrational. Rationals and irrationals, these are rationals. These are irrationals, are neither open nor closed. So they are neither open nor closed. Okay, uh, not open because we cannot find uh, neighborhood for every point in the universe of Q, right? Because if I take 
a rational number and try to find a neighborhood, then there will be a lot of irrational numbers in its neighborhood that does not belong to the set Q. And similar is the case of uh, irrational numbers. If I take an irrational number and I want to take a small neighborhood, then there will be infinite rational numbers around an irrational number and that uh, neighborhood does not belong to the universe of irrational numbers. So they are neither open nor closed. And then n is closed, okay, set of natural number is closed because n complement is open, right? It's pretty simple. n complement means r minus n, your universe is r, r minus n. So it will be like this negative infinity to one because we know that natural numbers are start from one, two, three, four, five, and so on. So every element between these numbers will be in the, uh, it will be included in the complement, but these numbers, only these numbers will be excluded. So the complement of this set is open. We can see that we can write it in the union as a set of union of open sets or open intervals. So this is indeed a closed set because its complement is open. And in the definition we learned earlier that the set is called closed if its complement is open. So again, for integers, the same thing. The complement of integer is open, so they are closed sets. Again, this set that is s equals 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4 is neither open nor closed. So it's neither open nor closed. Uh, neither open nor closed means it's not open, not, not closed simply. We can see that there are a lot of points missing in the neighborhood, so it's not open. For instance, if I take 1 over 4, and if I try to find some small neighborhood, so there are a lot of points that are not in the neighborhood of one over, there, is, there are no points, uh, in fact, in the neighborhood of one over four, a small neighborhood, I by, by neighborhood, I mean a small neighborhood. So this is not open and nor closed. Uh, why nor closed if I, okay, uh, one more definition of closed set was that uh, if the, set of limit point is equal to the set itself, then it itself is, uh, it, the set itself is called a closed set. If we can look back at the closed set, yes. Uh, a set is said to be closed if each of its limit point is a member of the set. But in this case, we can see that the only limit point is one, only limit point, oh, sorry, not one, not one. The limit point is zero. And because this is marching towards zero and it's not included in the set, so we are talking about all points to be included to for a set to be closed, but the limit point is a single point, in fact, and it's not included in the set, so it's neither open nor closed. And for this set, again, we can check that this is neither open nor closed, same condition. So uh, now we can move on to the Next definition, that is adherent points. So it's very important, adherent point. A point X belong to R. Again, this adherent point need not to be, not necessarily to be in the set. So it, it, it just belongs to the real numbers. X belongs to R. So it's something like uh, in the definition of limit point, we saw that limit point not necessarily need to be in the set. So it can be outside the set. So similarly, adherent points can be outside the set. So point X belong to R is an adherent point of set E if for all epsilon greater than zero, the neighborhood of the set of the point, sorry, the neighborhood of the point X, that is X plus epsilon and X minus epsilon intersection with the set is not empty. Okay, so from the set, from the set E, let's say this is a set E, for instance, A, B, set E, and if I take any point in this set and I take the neighborhood, smaller neighborhood of the set, for instance, if I'm standing at this point, for instance, standing at this point, so this, this, is, a, uh, this is open interval, but in a sense that if I am like checking A, that it's an adherent point or not, so I will take a small neighborhood around A. This is small neighborhood. This is outside, no matter. But this is small neighborhood contained in finite points of the set. And if I take this neighborhood, 
there is a minus epsilon and a plus epsilon and take intersection with the set E, then we know that this, this area here is also the part of set E and this is contained in set E and there are infinite points. So it's not equal to null, not equal to empty. Okay, uh, th there is a condition that this should not be empty. So it should not be empty. So, so we know that this is not empty. There are a lot of points, in fact, infinite points. So infinity is not necessary in this case. Infinity was necessary in the case of uh, limit points. But in this case, we only need that it should not be empty. So single point, one single element, if it exists in the intersection, then we call it as adherent point. Okay, and one more uh, way to say the adherent point is the uh, union of the set E with the derived set. So set E with the derived set or set of limit points, we can call it set of limit points. So it's there's a set of adherent, it's called the set of adherent points and it's also called the closure. Again, we have a isolated point. So a point X belong to E is an isolated point if there exists epsilon greater than zero such that this intersection is the point itself. So for instance, if I have a line and I have a point X, I take a small neighborhood X plus epsilon, X minus epsilon, and I took this set, whole set, and take the intersection with the set E, and I should get, if I get this X, so then this point is called isolated point. Okay, let's talk about this set. One, five, union, six, for instance. So now I can check, uh, every point in this set. So this is singleton, this is singleton, this is interval. So in the interval that is from one to five, I know that I cannot get any isolated point because if I take any neighbor, any neighborhood of any point and they take intersection with the set E, then I'm going to get uh, infinite points. Okay, but I what I need here is I that I should get the point itself. So for instance, so this is not the area of the isolated point. So now look at this six. So this six is isolated. We can see that because if I take a small neighborhood or in instance six minus epsilon, six plus epsilon and take the intersection with the e set E, then I'm going to get E is six at itself. Why? Because there is no neighborhood of six, no neighborhood, no points in the neighborhood, nothing here, nothing here. It's empty. So the intersection with the set E will be six because this X is included in the set. So six is included in the set and intersection of this small neighborhood is six itself and we call it as isolated point. Then the definition of the boundary point, a point X belong to R is a boundary point of E. If for all epsilon greater than zero, the set X minus epsilon, X plus epsilon intersection E and X minus epsilon, comma x plus epsilon intersection e complement are both non-empty okay this is very important so if we have a set for instance like this uh this let's say included this not included then we have a, a singleton element here then we have a set to infinity for instance so now if i want to check that which points are boundary points uh it's easy to figure out this is set this this whole thing is my set set e and uh, let's say this is zero this is one this is singleton five and then this is from seven to infinity for instance then now if i take any neighborhood if i take any point any point and i take let's call it x and i take a small neighborhood that is x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon and i take intersection with the set okay it's not empty. It's clear that it's not empty because this whole thing is included in the set as well and this neighborhood as well. So the intersection will be something, okay? It will be something finite, or, or sorry, something. So it will be not empty. So it will be non-empty, non right? So, uh, and then if for this point, I want to do this thing. Now, this is very interesting. So what is mean by E complement? So this is set E. So everything outside this E is my E complement. 
So everything outside this e my, is my E complement because I am subtracting this set from R. So a, a, everything outside this set is my R, uh, my complement of this set. Now, if I take this point, okay, X, and take the small neighborhood and take the intersection with the E complement, so it will be empty because nothing here in the neighborhood of X is part of this complement because complement is everything other than this set. So everything outside the set has nothing to do with this neighborhood. So that will be eventually empty. So this is this point does not qualify the definition of the uh, sorry uh, boundary point. Okay. And similarly, if I take this point or this point, and I can check that these these uh, points will uh, obviously these points will uh, qualify the definition of the boundary point, and we can check every point this point also qualifies the definition of boundary point this point also qualifies the definition of boundary point if we stand for instance this is this is an isolated point but this qualifies the definition of boundary point because if i'm standing here and i draw some small neighborhood so it's uh, x minus epsilon for instance i call it five okay this is five so five minus epsilon five minus epsilon five plus epsilon and take intersection with the set E. So I get five itself because nothing is in the neighborhood of five. So five itself. And again, if I want to take the intersection, intersection uh, E complement, okay. Okay, one more thing. I forgot to uh, tell this thing that this uh, area here, this line here, red line, we can see this is also not the part of the set. This is also not the part of the set because there is a gap from one to five because five is singleton. So these parts are also not included. So if I take the neighborhood of five and take the intersection with E complement, so E complement is this thing here, this thing here, and these two areas. So eventually, if I'm going to take the intersection with E complement, uh, for five minus epsilon five plus epsilon. So this this red area here is the neighborhood of five. This red area is in the neighborhood of five. So the intersection with the complement and this is part of the complement. So again, it's not equal to empty. It's not empty. So this also qualifies the definition of the boundary point. So this is also a boundary point. And similarly, this point also qualifies the definition of boundary point. We can check it. Okay, so hope you guys understand this lesson with these examples. Uh, I took uh, try to take a lot of examples uh, for the better understanding. So try to go through the whole lesson. And if you want to ask anything, you can ask in the comment box. Thanks for watching the lesson. That's all for the time being.